Hello everyone and welcome back to SnowRunner. I am at the bottom of this hill where I left my fuel trailer last episode when I come tumbling down. I came back down the hill, I picked up the trailer, I'm now at the bottom. So we're going to continue on trying to unlock some of these watchtowers. Now I've marked out a path here to get up close to this one, so that's our next goal. Hopefully by the end of this episode we will have this entire map opened up. But we shall see. Because that was the plan last episode, and <laughs> you saw how that went. I did not end up doing too well. I think I'm going the wrong way. Yep, so I started this episode off on a wonderful note of going the wrong way, as usual. So let me get this thing turned around. I may have the worst navigation skills of anybody playing this game. That might be a an absolute fact. But that's okay, because I have a lot of fun playing this game. I, I still... This is what, episode 7, episode 8, something like that? And I'm still thoroughly enjoying this game. It's challenging for sure. There are those kind of uh, butt-clinching kind of moments to where your vehicle's starting to tip over and you're kind of freaking out. You're like, oh, no, don't tip, don't tip, you know. You have a lot of that. There are those moments where you're in deep mud and spinning out. And you're wondering if you're even going to make it or if you're going to have to recover. But that's what makes it a lot of fun is that it is challenging. It's not just your standard truck driving kind of game where you're just delivering freight from one point to another. This area here looks like it's going to be fairly sketchy. Now you'll notice I am still in the scout. At the end of the last episode I said I was going to get rid of the scout because it was just way too tippy. But then I thought maybe I was being unfair because I did take the trailer off and that was a dumb move because the trailer was giving me a lot of extra stability and by taking it off I was pretty much guaranteeing that I was going to flip over on that terrain so I thought why not give it another chance leave the trailer on and give it another chance because when I had the trailer attached it almost tipped a couple times but it never actually tipped until I flipped it on the very top of that that hill we're gonna cross the river here now this may look familiar to you and it should because this is the path I took I think I'm good and stuck already this is the path I took with my truck on that episode where I was trying to deliver up here to the dam and I flipped it so if we're lucky we might even get to see the cargo that I was carrying that day because I never came back and got it so unless it just disappears off the map it should still be here somewhere and if it is that's kind of a bonus because that means I don't have to go back and get it again I could just roll back through here and pick it up as I go I'm trying everything I got all-wheel drive I put it down in low, got it in low, 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 high. I'm not going anywhere, so I'm going to have to try to figure out how to winch my way out of this, because this is, this is pretty deep mud I'm in. Alright, I've done the unthinkable again. I detached my trailer. Seeing if maybe that'll give me a little extra oomph to get out of this hole. But I'm not going to leave it behind. I'm going to bring it with me. I'm just trying to get popped out of this mud real quick. If I can get the, the scout up out of this, then I can always winch the trailer back to me and reconnect. But I am just spinning. Completely spinning. I don't even think I'm actually moving forward or backwards at this point. Bring the trailer up closer. And there's got to be a way to get across here, because i got to cross here with my big truck. 
So the scout should definitely make it. I shouldn't have ended up stuck this early. Because I'm barely even into the river yet. Unless I just picked a very bad spot to try to cross. But I figured staying out of the water would be better. Because I messed up my engine a couple times with the water. So we'll try to get ourselves situated here and make another run at it. As you know, I do not give up easy, so I will not be just giving up on trying to get over there. I'm going to reach that blue dot. It's just a matter of how I'm going to do it. I think I'll try to back up and kind of get back up on the road and maybe make another run at it from a different angle or, or something, maybe. This is crazy how how stuck I am. Maybe I was right in my initial feelings about the scout. Maybe I should just chuck it in the garbage bin. I know that there's a lot of... There we go. There's a lot of much better vehicles that you get as you go. I know Russia has a lot of really good vehicles. So, I'm thinking it's a pretty good chance that I'm going to end up going to Russia within the next couple episodes. And I probably won't do a whole lot of exploring in Russia because I haven't even explored Alaska yet. But I might just go there just to see what kind of vehicles I can buy. Because there's a truck there that everybody is saying is really good. And I would like to see if I can go ahead and pick that up if I if I, one, have the money, and if, two, if it's available to me, I think it will be. I'm going to try to kind of sneak over. I don't want to go over those rocks, I don't think. I think that might be a dumb idea, too. But maybe if I go over to the side of the rock here, instead of going down in that... Well, no, that might not be wise, either. Alright, let's see if we can just get a little momentum here and and get past that spot where we got stuck at least. Maybe it'll be a little easier for us once we're past that deep mud. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes it's it's just a matter of taking a different angle at it. Just because you get stuck doesn't mean that that section is impossible to get through. You just have to try to figure out how to approach it to get through. Now if I remember correctly, before too long up here is where I flipped the truck. Up here around this turn maybe, or a little bit past it. So we should be coming up on the stuff that I was carrying when I flipped. I think it was past this muddy area here. Because I was all happy that I got through the mud and everything, and I was kind of talking and not paying attention where I was going. And I flipped. If this is the same section of the map, I think it is. It looks like it. But then again, as I've proven multiple times, my my navigation skills aren't the greatest, so I could have been on a completely different section of the map and just think that it was this section. That's entirely possible, but it should be up here somewhere. Unless they just disappear. I don't know if they disappear or not. I wouldn't think so. I think I'm going to have this winch working overtime in this episode. But as long as I can keep all the wheels on the ground and not flip over, that'll be a bonus in my mind. And as I said, the, the trailer does wonders for your stability. I really, really appreciate having a trailer now. When I first did it, it was just for fuel. You know, it was, the idea was I wasn't going to run out of gas if I carried some with me. All right, where am I? I'm getting close to this watchtower. Can I go straight over to it, or does a road lead over there from somewhere else? I don't see another road. Looks like I can go right up through the trees there, maybe. 
So do I leave the trailer or do I bring it with me? That's the question. I think I'll leave it. Let me refuel. It kind of makes you nervous to do because the trailer gives you a lot of stability, but it's going to make it a lot more difficult to get through the trees. I'm going to get hung up fairly easily, I think. So once I refuel my vehicle, I might just detach it and leave it here on the road. Go up and get that watchtower and come back for it. I think I can manage to not flip for that little bit of time. Famous last words, right? I will try to be very careful here and gingerly make my way through these trees. I think it should be just up here as the watchtower, so it shouldn't be that bad. As long as I don't do anything dumb, I should be okay. Alright, oh, we're, we're here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Make sure you put the brake on. Alright, let's see what that unlocks. See if we can maybe get a new vehicle or some upgrades or something cool. Let's see. We have an upgrade up there. And that's kind of, I think, going to be on our way to get into the next watchtower. There's an upgrade over there. There's a new truck over there. That's going to be cool to check out. And another upgrade down from it. Okay. So I think maybe the, the play here is to pick the trailer back up. And then just kind of make my way over to that vehicle over on the right, but kind of pick up the upgrades and, and get the watchtowers as I go. Just kind of try to make a circle of it. I think that's the, the smart move. That's assuming, of course, that I can get back down there to my trailer without rolling this thing. It did pretty good coming up, so I don't see why it shouldn't do pretty good going down. I have discovered a lot of new objectives, too. That'll be good once we get the map opened up. All those new objectives are new jobs that I can do, hauling stuff here or there, or doing tasks, and making some money and experience points. Both of which are going to be very important for unlocking all the really cool trucks and scout vehicles that will be available in the future. But yeah, that went, that went fairly well. I think that's a pretty good strategy, as long as I don't get myself into any kind of real bad trouble. The progress is good. Anytime you can unlock a watchtower, get an upgrade, Anything like that, that's a win. Because it, none of it comes easy on this game. And that's, that's part of the beauty of it for me. That's why I love this game so much. One, it's, a, it's an absolute gorgeous game. And two, I love the challenging part of it. And three, I like the fact that it's not a time thing to where you're under pressure that, oh my god, i got to get this done right now, otherwise the timer's going to run out. I like the laid-back nature of it, where you can kind of take your time and and just relax. And if you flip over and roll down the hill and have to recover your vehicle, then that's okay. You just try again. I mean, it's frustrating, don't get me wrong, especially when you spend an hour driving someplace and then you roll and then you got to come all the way back. That, that gets frustrating sometimes, but you can just enjoy the drive. I think this episode is going to go a lot better than the last episode. I'm, I'm confident about this episode. Even though I have the same vehicle, I'm confident that I'm going to have a better game this time. Because I'm going to try to be careful. I'm going to leave the trailer behind again, and I'm going to try to go up over this and get this upgrade. It looks to me like there's a almost a little trail there that I'll be able to use to get up and then come back. So it worked last time, so let's see if it works again. 
or if we have severely miscalculated. See, it looks it looks fairly tame. I mean, you have rocks over there to the right, but it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. And I think there's a trail right over here past these rocks that'll enable me to get right up by it. And that's what it appears to be, like a little little path. So we're going to try to take that. I think it's going to lead right up there, and it's going to be beautiful. Yep. Wonderful. Okay, so watchtower done, upgrade done. That is good progress. See, we got engageable drivetrain. What's it for? The GMC. Okay, so that's a good thing. Now, I believe the next step is going to be that next watchtower. And then we'll begin making our way over to that other truck that's over there. I don't exactly know what that other truck is, but I could see that it was a truck of some sort, so that's cool. It could be a new scout vehicle. It could be a new heavy lifting kind of truck that can haul freight or or who knows. Where did I end up? Did I go the wrong way again? Let's see where am I? I'm right up from it. Let me put a marker so I can at least see where... Yeah, it's over on the other side over there. So maybe I ought to back... Try to back back through this little gap that I just went through. It is surprisingly easy... To lose your way on this game. I mean, I only went a few feet. And I was completely going the wrong direction. And if I wouldn't have thought to check, because it didn't look familiar, I could have ended up in a pretty bad position where I was fairly far away and on the other side of some rocks. But we made it back to our trailer, so that's awesome. We'll pick the trailer back up and head on our merry way. Yeah, this is going to be a great episode. I can feel it in my bones. It's going to be super successful. I'm going to unlock all kinds of stuff. I'm going to get to that truck this episode. And I think I'm going to get that upgrade down below it too. Before the end of the episode. That's my goal. So if I can get down here, unlock the watchtower. And I can get to that truck. And I can get to that upgrade. Then I will call that a success. And that will be a, a tremendously successful episode for me. See, I think I ought to go down on this other path, though. I don't think the path I'm on is going to be the right one that will lead to that watchtower. I think this is where the direction I'm going to have to go. Because the watchtower is up there. I don't know. Maybe I ought to just forget the watchtower for now and concentrate on that truck. Because that watchtower looks like it's on top of a mountain. And I might need a little bit better scout vehicle to get up there. Because I don't trust this one climbing mountains. We saw what happened last time. One, it did not have the power to get past that one point in that hill. And it completely just kept flipping over. And I don't want a repeat of that. But this vehicle that we're going to go pick up, who knows, that might be the vehicle that can get to the top of that mountain. And if that's the case, then... That's awesome. I'll go back and unlock it. Or who knows, I might get over that direction and it might not look as bad as I thought it was and I'll just go for it. And we'll see what happens. That's another beautiful thing about this game is there's so many choices. And you can make a plan and then as you're driving along you see something else and that catches your eye and you're like, Hey, let's do that instead. Now this vehicle does have some nice lights on it. It lights up pretty good. And that's always a bonus. Because even in the morning time, when you get down in these thick trees, it, it gets pretty dark sometimes. And you kind of can't see where you're going. Sometimes, believe it or not, you can actually see better 
in the evening and the nighttime when you have your lights on than you can during the morning in some sections of this map. This is an incredibly rocky area. Either I completely lost the road and, and went off road, or this road turned very, very rocky. I'm getting hung up on rocks. But I'm still making progress. I'm still moving forward, and I am still on all four wheels. So that is a bonus. Sometimes slow and steady wins the race. I'm going to have the winch on me, and it will serve its purpose over and over and over again if need be. I am not shy about using the winch when I need it. Later on, when we get some of these Russian vehicles that are so amazing, I might not ever use the winch again, or very rarely, but right now we're still on the early vehicles, so I need a lot of help sometimes to get through here. Now, it's bouncing around quite significantly on all these rocks, but as you see with the trailer attached, it kind of keeps it leveled out a little bit better to where it doesn't doesn't just roll over on me like it had been doing. This is one hell of a little bitty road I just picked out. I don't know if the top road would have led me to the watchtower or not, but I know that this road will lead me down to get to that other vehicle. And I think that watchtower is going to be up on top of a, a little mountain thing or something. And if that's the case, there isn't going to be a road that leads to it. I'm going to have to climb to it. So I might as well be down here on the bottom where I can get to the other vehicle. That's kind of my thinking on it. This road kind of gives me flashbacks of that other road that I was on where I was trying to drive my uh, my Paystar through and it was just the truck was way too big for the tiny road and I kept getting myself in trouble and almost flipping and bouncing around and everything. I wonder if this is that same road. Not quite sure. Whoa! And I rolled it. With the trailer I rolled it. But at least I only rolled it the once. And I do know how to get myself flipped back over now. I have a, quite a bit of practice, actually, doing that because of the last episode. So this shouldn't take but a minute to get myself back on my wheels. Once again, probably famous last words. But I think I'll be able to pull this off. Let me get out of it from where I'm at. Maybe I can get a little distance here, get out in the open to where I can winch to something and, and just jerk it on over. I think the problem there is I was too close to that tree and I wasn't able to, to really get the leverage I needed to pop it back on its wheels. It's definitely a learning curve using the winch to flip your vehicle back over. Yeah, see, that was easy. So what we've learned through all this flipping over and falling down mountains and all this stuff is you want to get yourself to an area that's open enough to where you have the room to get over and then pick a tree in the right area that is far enough away that you can have the leverage. There is my freight. There it is. That's the stuff that I was hauling when I flipped the truck. So I must have came at it from this direction. The direction I'm heading now must have been where I came from when I was delivering that, that freight. So that's sweet that that's still there. So I'll come back out here with my other truck and pick that back up and deliver it once I figure out where I got to deliver it to. That'll save me a trip all the way across the other map. I really like that, that, that the freight stays where you drop it. That has a lot of implications for gameplay later to where I can grab extra 
and take it and drop it off near another objective that I can finish later or something. Kind of helps you plan things out a little bit better. That's a really cool feature. All right, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to approach going up across this river to get to that truck. I think, think there's another watchtower down here. Maybe I'll, I'll head that way first before I try to do that and see if I can open it up. Maybe I can open up a little bit more of this map and that will give me a little bit better view on, on if there's any upgrades or if there's a better way to cross than that because that looks kind of sketchy. I know I had trouble with it in my big truck. And this looks like a fairly decent road. This shouldn't be that big of a challenge to get through. I mean, yes, I am stuck, but I'm going to be able to use my winch and pop right out. It's weird how, as time progresses in this game, as you play more, your idea of a challenging section changes. Like in the beginning, if there was deep mud where I would get stuck, that would be something that would be worrying to me. I would be like, okay, I've got to try to figure out how to get past this section because I always get stuck here. But now getting stuck isn't even a big deal. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm stuck in the mud. No, no worries. I'll just winch to a tree, yank myself right out and move on with my day. The thing now that, that kind of worries me is when I start bouncing too much and I get on inclines with a bunch of rocks and stuff like that, that's the new concern because I'm always wary of of this vehicle tipping over too much and then I have to spend a bunch of time trying to get it flipped back over and all that whereas when you get stuck in the mud it's literally as long as you have a winch point it's literally just winching to a tree and getting out so that's a very simple thing now and I'm sure there'll come a day when I'm zipping around this map like it's nothing because I'll have much better vehicles and all that Let's see where this goes. One thing I like to do is open up maps. Whenever I play a game and the map is not readily available to where you can just open it up and look at the whole map, I always like to spend a little bit of time exploring and opening the map up so that I can plot out where I'm going and try to figure out where everything's going to be. They say information is power. And it's always good to have more information than less. Yeah, this is a nice muddy area. And it looks like I'm going to have some water up here to deal with too. Another thing I think is brilliant about this game is even though both of these maps are Michigan, I'm going to go, I'm going to try to just go up and around it. Even though both of these maps are Michigan, the physics of the mud and just the way the mud is, how you get stuck, how it reacts, everything is different than the other map. This map is much more challenging. It's got a different kind of mud that, that really sinks you down into it. Whereas most of the mud on the other map, the one we started on, you would sl slide through it, you know, you would spin, but it wasn't really like a swampy kind of mud. It sunk down on too much, but it is in this map. It, it's kind of cool. New objective. Here's another vehicle. Oh, I got to repair that vehicle. So that's not one I can just take with me. Okay, well, it's a new mission at least. That's kind of cool. Trying to decide which way I want to go with this. It doesn't look like there's another way to get there easily. Now this road might it looks like over on the other side where the bank is, there might be a road that goes up around there, but how far do I got to travel? 
to get to it. Maybe the best bet would be just come on back and go ahead and just give her hell and try to get across there. It's a little concerning because I'm having a lot of trouble getting through these areas today. But, as I said in the beginning, t this is going to be a good episode. We are going to be successful. We're not going to have any major problems. We did flip, but that's okay. Because we were able to quickly get back on our wheels. And we're going to go after this new truck and see what it is. It probably said what it was on the map, but I didn't pay much attention. So... If you're watching this right now and you saw what it was on the map and you're yelling at your TV, it's on the map, dummy. Okay, I get it. It's on the map. I'm sorry. But let's be surprised. Either way, I got to go get it. Hopefully it's something cool. I would love it to be another scout vehicle of some sort. Something that would do a lot better than this because that's where the, I'm having the most trouble is with my scout vehicle believe it or not I have the con and that's a pretty badass vehicle but it's really really tippy and it can't haul a trailer so that's the problem I have with it I also have my pickup which is nice but it gets stuck a lot but it doesn't tip so that might end up being my go-to until I get something better. Because it can haul a trailer. And I want to always have a fuel trailer with me. So that I don't have to worry about running out of fuel. Because these scout vehicles don't hold three or four hundred like some of the other trucks do. They hold sixty or seventy. So it doesn't take very long to burn through that when you're in all-wheel drive and on some of them you'll have diff lock and all that kind of stuff going and you'll burn through fuel pretty quickly and that is an issue now they're saying they're going to be bringing mods to this game so that'll be really sweet when it happens because i'm sure somebody's going to make a mod to where you don't burn fuel when you drive so you don't have to worry about refueling anymore so that might be a that might be an option. Now it's kind of cheating. I mean, there are people that that say that. There are people that do not like mods because it makes the game too easy. And I get it. I can understand that point of view. But also I'm a guy that plays a lot of Farming Simulator 19. I love well, I love the whole Farming Simulator series. I've had it since, like, I think 13 or 15 was my first Farming Simulator game. So, I've been playing it for years. And I love the mods on that game. They make the game worth playing. They make it super fun. I mean, there's a certain purity to the game that you lose when you start using a bunch of different mods. But at the same time, the whole point of playing the game is to have fun. And if you're not going to enjoy yourself... You know, why, why have to struggle forever to afford anything in a game when you could download a mod that will give you as much money as you want? You know, that's just an example. I mean, I know that the building up is part of the struggle, it's part of the fun of the game, I get that. But you reach a point when you've played a game enough to where you've already built up a hundred times. I mean, you've you started from scratch, you built your farm up, you built everything up, and it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I've done this so many times, I just want to be able to buy some stuff. Because on that game especially, I mean, you're dealing with equipment that might cost you three, four hundred thousand dollars for a, a, a piece of equipment, and you're making forty or fifty thousand each time you harvest. And it takes a while to plant and for the stuff to grow and to harvest it so you could literally be waiting around for quite a long time before you ever get to the point where you can actually buy anything now i know i'm i'm kind of cheating a little bit here going around all this mud but i'm just trying to get through i think i'm going to try to unlock this trailer real quick i mean there's a trailer sitting right there 
and I'm right next to it. So why not go ahead and drop the trailer off that I'm carrying and and go over and just try to unlock it because you get experience points for that. I can always come back later and pick it up. Just make sure I don't tip. Because all those experience points are going to add up eventually. Can I not unlock this trailer? Is this not a trailer I can use? Well, apparently not. Okay, well that was a waste of time. Back, what, back to what I was saying. When you have to pay half a million dollars for a piece of equipment, you might have to plant and harvest your field four or five times to make that money. So if you're paying that for a tractor, and then you have to turn around and pay that again for a loading wagon or or a baler or some other kind of equipment that you need to get the job done. By the time all is said and done, you've spent 10, 15 actual real-life hours playing this game just to afford the equipment. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to pop a mod in and, and get the money you need, buy the stuff you want, and then take the mod off so that you're not gaining any more money, but you just have your equipment now that you can actually start to build up your farm. That's just kind of an example of what I'm talking about. And you'll have that on this game as well. This is sketchy because if this current gets a hold of me and takes me on down the river, I'm in trouble. But on this game when the mods come, I'm, I'm looking forward to that kind of thing on this game as well. To where you can have little cheats, if you want to call them that, where you don't use as much fuel so you don't have to worry about refueling as much. Or you'll get something that'll give you more money so that you can afford new equipment or... Or whatever and you also have all kinds of really cool vehicles that'll be made that'll be really fun just to take out and play in the mud in vehicles that won't get stuck that are just beast vehicles and then you'll have vehicles that are on the other end of that spectrum that are just normal cars or something you're going to try to take out here and run in the mud so there's a lot of fun to be had with mods i'm for anything that makes the game experience better because the great thing about mods is you can choose to use them or not. You know, you don't have to. Nobody's telling you you must. But they'll be there if you want them. Gives you more choice, more options. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm going to try to skirt the outside here and avoid some of these ruts. I'm hoping that when I get up to this vehicle that it's something really awesome. But here's what I'll say. If it's not something really awesome, then I will do something really awesome with it. How's that? That sounds like a good compromise, doesn't it? So either we'll have a really cool vehicle, or I will take whatever vehicle it is and do something really cool with it. Something just outrageous with it. What is that? Is a pile of something laying in the road? I didn't spill that too, did I? I don't remember ever picking that up. But you never know with me. I've said before on these episodes that my brother actually drives a truck in real life. That's what he does for a living. And he is extremely good at all this kind of stuff. But I do not drive a truck in real life. I sit on my butt and write books and talk on the radio in real life. That's what I do for a living. So I don't have to do this kind of work. And it's probably a good thing because I would get lost, most likely. And... If my driving on this game is any indication, I would most likely flip my vehicle. And unlike the game, you can't just recover your vehicle and everything's fine. 
Uh oh. Speaking of flipping, I'll just Spider Man winch my way out of this. That was nice because the bank was there to keep me from rolling all the way over. But you you have a risk of actually dying or or at the very least losing your job because you flipped their vehicle. Yeah, I can see the I can see the vehicle if that's what that is up there. It looks like the same truck I already have. The pickup truck that I painted orange. I think that's the same truck. We shall see. That's the, the dot's right on it, so I think that's what it is. New truck discovered, Chevrolet CK1500. Yep, that's the same one. Okay, so it's not something super cool. It's something we already have. So, let me repair it. I have the roof rack, which has repair supplies. So... I can repair and I can definitely refuel this truck. Okay, it's got fuel. Let's try to repair it. I don't want to repair this guy. Let's repair this guy. I'm going to repair it just so I can drive it so that I can wreck it. What do you think? I mean, I'm going to end up selling it because I already own it. So there's no point in keeping one that I already own. I have a better version already. I've already upgraded the one I have. So I'm going to change over to this. We're going to go get that upgrade. And I'm going to do it in spectacular fashion if I can. Let me look at the map. And i got to go down this switchback. And the upgrade's down there. But it looks like the upgrade is off of the road. Down by the river. So we'll go look and see what it looks like down there. And I might just flip this thing off the side of the, the road there and try to somersault my way to the upgrade. What do you think? That'd be fun. I mean, I'm going to be restoring the truck almost immediately afterwards anyway, recovering it back to the garage. So it'll be completely fixed. And then I'm going to be selling it. So might as well do something absolutely insane with it first and bust it all to hell. That's the way I feel. If we can get down this switchback with it, we should. I mean, the pickup we have does decent. Now this one is not the upgraded version. It does not have the new wheels. It does not have the better drivetrain. It does not have the better engine. It does not have the raised suspension. It's just the stock version. But I still think I'll be able to get it down to the upgrade at least. Hopefully. Because now that I thought of it, I really want to somersault this thing off the cliff. I think that's going to be cool. But the question is, can I land it on the upgrade? That's the question. It depends on where that upgrade is located. Because somersaulting off the cliff is cool. But if I can't land it in the upgrade, I, I'm not going to be able to get the upgrade then. That's the only problem. Because once I somersault it off the thing, it's going to be finished. It's not going to going to drive anymore after that, I don't think. Unless somehow I manage to land on my wheels, which would be a miracle. Back up. i got to try to be a little careful here. I don't want to wreck it before I get down there to wreck it. That would be a hell of a note. Now, I could go... I could go right here, because right down there is the upgrade. I can see it. So I could go here and try to skirt the shoreline to get to it. But what fun is that? There is no carnage in that. Yeah, I think I can make it. But I think I'm going to go up this way and, and take a look. And see what it looks like from the top. If I can not roll off the the road. Come on, baby. Just got to hold on a little bit longer. Be 
it keeps wanting to run right into that rock. Like every time I would back up and go, it would just veer right back towards the rock. So I'm just winching up past it. You can really tell the difference in the the all-terrain or the off-road tires, either one and the regular tires. And you can tell a difference with all the upgrades that I put on the other truck. Okay, so up here is above the upgrade. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to just drive down that. So what I will do is try to get lined up. Whoa, now, come on. Get lined up the best I can and just give it hell. And let's flip her. Oh, yeah. All right, stop, 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 stop. Did I, did I stay in? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we got another upgrade for the truck that I'm driving. That's sweet. So I will put that on my other pickup then. All right, so that is the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And somehow I ended up back on my wheels, which is pretty spectacular. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.